Peter Chang and welcome to part 11 of our how to paint your RC car build and in this part of the guide I'm going to use my indispensable Craig Fraser Skullmaster Nano Art Tool stencil and once again the great thing about these stencils is that they're they really save you a lot of time uh, it just looks super artistic and overall it's just uh, it just enhances the, the the speed and the time uh, and it makes you just a much more productive painter artisan artist uh, what have you also uh, just want to point out to you that if you do use stencils uh, there is also room for freehanding as well too. Um, you could just uh, freehand it out, uh, parts of it out as well too, to to enhance the stencil. Um, it's it's just that uh, uh, some artists say, oh, don't use a stencil at all, but uh, stencils are your friend. Uh, they aid you in the speed of your designs. Uh, and a lot of designs aren't possible without uh, some kind of masking and, and stencils. I've seen a lot of artists just attempt to freehand everything, uh, and and I have to admit that their their cars don't look that great because uh, even though it's individualized and they freehanded out parts of it, um, it, it's just it just looks kind of amateurish. So. Uh, stencils do give your car a, a kind of a prototype quality to it uh, and also uh, depending on how you use the stencil it could also look quite original as well too and I tend to think that of the uh, stencil as giving your car uh, more flair so on this side I'm using that the Skullmaster stencil and I'm just gonna create like like a wall of skulls on, on the side of the car and I'm using my Iwata Highline HPCH airbrush and it has a 0.3 millimeter nozzle and the reason why I'm using this airbrush is that it gives me more control so so uh, I'm, I'm gonna need to make multiple passes uh, as I use the stencil uh, also I might need to go in and, and uh, freehand out parts of the stencil to make it look a little less stencil like and the Highline airbrush really gives me all that great control and as we see as I look on that side it looks just amazing so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go ahead and just move the stencil a little bit and and just kind of reposition it so that I could actually uh, have it look like I have a a uh, kind of a skull wall going all the way across this car body so um, also uh, uh, when you use stencils you should be a little patient um, also uh, uh, you need to just check your PSI levels uh, I, I did meet one artist that said, "Oh, every every stencil doesn't work with my with my art." And uh, when I when I saw him, he was actually using a, a super high uh, PSI, and then it kept uh, blowing out his uh, stencil around. So uh, and also like you know like he didn't use tape and uh, you know try to keep the stencil from moving. Uh, but it's just you know just kind of rudimentary. Like you could just use a little scotch tape. Uh, hold hold down one side of the stencil. Um, also, uh, uh, just so you know, the stencil has has a lot of different designs on it. So, uh, if, if you want to break off a portion of the design, you could actually just use scotch tape to mask off a part of the stencil. Uh, especially like if you're if you're kind of new to airbrushing or or if you kind of get clumsy. Or worried about clumsiness, uh, just mask off an area of the stencil. It only takes a second. So I'm just going to fire up this, this airbrush and then just do another spray here. And this time I'm just I'm just uh, spraying from further away, just a little bit lighter. 
and just take your time I'm just spraying this from left to right left to right and if if you haven't ever used a a Wada Highline airbrush I highly recommend trying one out it's it just has a unprecedented level of control with the way that that you paint and it, it is just uh, it just changes the way that you paint so that you could paint much better as well so checking out that line it looks like everything is looking great uh, we could flip it it looks just awesome there too so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the stencil and wow that is looking cool we're getting our skull wall put together pretty well so this side of the body looks pretty good let me just pull it up closer to the camera I'm just so proud of this and also I want to show you what's really awesome about the stencil is that uh, because it's laser cut and because it's thin uh, and because it's solvent proof uh, we could actually use the stencil just about everywhere uh, and this is where an advantage of where the stencil is thin comes into play because uh, I want to apply the stencil along this curved part of the body and because the stencil is so thin I could actually just go ahead and just you know tape it to both sides of the curve and then come back and paint with my highline brush here and that is looking pretty good I'm just going to go back in with a little bit more pressure so once again you just paint from left to right left to right and that is looking pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the stencil and we see that the design has translated very well off to that off that curve that is looking just amazing and it it almost looks uh, very very uh, epic uh, with that with that wall of skulls there uh, it just tells a great story and at the top there it's uh, I kind of pulled back a little further on the stencil so it looks a little bit more faded thanks for watching and remember everything matters and stay tuned for part 12 of our tutorial